So you have heard this, this term, deaf-blind indicators, a few times already this morning. Um, it is so that uh, in order to get an overview of the opportunities and services for people with deaf blindness in Europe, we used documents that were generated by the Academic Network of European Disability, ANET. And ANET was established by the European Commission in 2008. And they developed a new framework for comparative monitoring uh, of European-wide disability provision. And this framework is called the Indicators of Disability Equality in Europe, IDEE. So, now you still don't understand, I think, what we mean with the indicators. It'll come. These indicators of IDEE, we have used, this framework we have used, um, and I will try to explain how we did that. And as Jill this morning and William and others already mentioned, deaf blindness is a unique disability with specific barriers, and these barriers, they have specific and unique impacts on everyday life. This everyday life is described in several domains. And I will show you all the domains. And I will give you a short explanation what you can think of with uh, each domain. So domain one is about the demographics, the deaf blindness, the rates. Domain two, personal and family life, considers people's participation in social and private life. Domain three is about choice and control, and it concerns people's choices and control at a community level, but also at a personal level and in private life. Domain four, access to goods and services, covers questions about legal rights to goods and services. So it includes, for example, rehabilitation, uh, special equipment, technical equipment, or access to public buildings and transport. Domain five, education and lifelong learning, covers the educational provision. Domain six, work and employment, covers issues relating to the employment opportunities. And then, in the end, domain seven, income and poverty, which relates to the financial situation, so it also includes access to financial assistance and personal assistance. And you could say that everyday life fits in all these domains. And ANET has developed a set of indicators for each domain. But before I will go on, I now will try to explain to you what is meant with an indicator. And like William Green already started with his view on an indicator going left or right, well, I can tell you there is much more to find on the internet, on Google, when you Google indicators. As you can see, I have uh, selected a few definitions of an indicator. Um, then you will see that, uh, for example, a compass needle that is pointing in this image northwest, it is an indicator. A thermostat saying how much degrees it is outside is also an indicator, which, by the way, this morning already it said 23 degrees here when I was downstairs. Do you have a big screen? I'm really happy with that. We don't see that often in the Netherlands at that time in the morning. But also, it is an indicator. So all these indicators, they have something in common it is that they all refer to specific information. So 
all indicators, they refer to something specific, and the indicators of IDEE, -E, they refer to quality of life. So that is actually what we are talking about when we are talking about indicators. So, what does that mean? Well, to give an answer to that question, I want to give an example. And um, to do that, I just have, I want to take you into domain two, personal and family life. And as said before, this domain deals with people's participation in social and private life. And in the IDEE, there is a whole list of different indicators. I now only have selected three different indicators. So one indicator says all disabled people have an equal right with others to marry or enter into legal partnerships. Another one says it is unlawful for public and private providers of family planning services to discriminate on grounds of disability. Another one says all disabled people have social contacts and friendships. So of course all these indicators are very meaningful for the persons with deaf blindness. And what we have been doing because this list of indicators, it, it consisted of really a lot of different indicators, but what we have been doing is that we have selected those indicators that are very meaningful for people, persons with deaf blindness. So in this example, we uh, combined these indicators into a deaf blind indicator and then it says that people with deaf blindness have opportunities to socialize, so they have family relations and friends. Well, that is also easy to say, because what do we mean by that? And that has also been something very important, what we have been doing in this project, to discuss what does it take, what are the special needs then of a person with deaf blindness, so that this person is able to have a social life. It can mean, for example, that a person will need special technical equipment. So, is it available? It can be that a person needs a guide dog. It can be that uh, personal assistance is necessary to be able to go out. But it can also mean that not only the person with deaf blindness himself, but also family, relatives, friends, that they will need training to learn new com communication methods. So these are all different issues that relate to the indicator, do, does a person with deaf blindness, um, that, that he has a social life. So with all these indicators, deaf-blind indicators that we have picked and that we have uh, selected, we use those indicators into the questionnaire. You've already heard something about the questionnaire. And so this is important to realize what indicators are because our questionnaire is again based on these indicators. And the questionnaire will be more explained by my colleagues from Austria. So, Indicators. Do you feel happy with the term definition, indicators? Yes. I'm glad, still doubting a bit, but you get, we had two years already to, you know, get acquainted with this indicator. But I hope you will understand, and if not, you can always ask one of us. And then now I would like to give the word to Christiana. <laughs> 